Hello everyone, Dr. J here. Super excited to bring you this interesting podcast, unique podcast. I don't think anybody's doing anything like this. And it's DNA consulting. And that's what I do every day. I have crazy interesting conversations with people. And I, there's so many days I sit there and think, man, I wish I had that on record. I talked recently to a guy in Africa who's in an anti-poaching unit in Africa, like they protect white rhinos and elephants and things like that. I mean, super interesting. Not only that, people have really interesting health issues and there's stuff that you can learn from. You know, it's not like it's custom to that person. It's things that are basic and principles that other people can learn from. So it illustrates the power of understanding your genetics. It also illustrates the limitations or potential limitations of DNA. Can't tell you everything. And so I think hopefully I'm providing some value there. And literally anybody can sign up through ajconsultingcompany.com through my website. I also started a Patreon page specifically for this podcast. It's patreon.com slash Anthony G-J. J-A-Y is the last name. That really helps. And it's also important because I want to start another podcast, which I described there. It has to do with fish. So check that out. And I also included a free video on that Patreon page. I produced it personally, and it's me shooting fish. I got the kids involved. My wife is there. She shot her first fish ever with a bow and arrow, so it's pretty awesome. Definitely worth checking out just for that. Check out that Patreon page. Again, Anthony G.J. And the website is AJ Consulting Company. Hello? Stephanie. Yes? Dr. J. Hi, how are you? Great, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I've been looking forward to our call together. Yeah, same. (laughs) Um, So the microphone, is that all set up and everything? Yep, it's all set up. (laughs) Awesome. Sorry about the the delayed package and everything else. It's been... You're actually the first person I've talked to doing the podcast version. Oh, okay. So it's all kind of trial and error, you know? Even yeah. For me. <laughs> well, and the, the world is weird right now, so everything is, yeah. you know, got to be creative. Well, which, which, where are you at? Are you in, actually in Texas? Yeah, we're in San Antonio. Okay, yeah, because your phone said Missouri. I know. We're, we're military, oh. so we like to confuse everybody. Oh nice. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. San Antonio. So obviously the Alamo is huge there, right? Yes. and yeah, what everybody does? Pretty much, and it's supposed to be fiesta time right now in San Antonio, but because of COVID, that's all canceled, so the whole state is kind of upset. Sure. (laughs) Oh. So they have uh, San Antonio on lockdown? Yeah, I think we're supposed to open up back, you know, soon-ish, but Mm -hmm. I'm kind of hoping that that doesn't happen, but I think it's going to. They haven't. Sure. They don't ask me my opinion. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Well, I mean... It's a nice place. I've been there. It's a strange place, San Antonio, because it feels almost like Spain or something, you know? Yeah, and Texas, we're, we've only been here two years, so we're learning Texas is like its own country. Yeah. So we're not <laughs> we're not really Texans yet. I'm not sure how long oh, it'll man. take to become a Texan if we ever do, but it's it's a definitely like a whole new world when you come to Texas. Yeah, yeah, especially San Antonio. Like, I've, I was in Austin, I think, three times last year, mm-hmm. and Austin it's feeling more and more like a part of California or something. <laughs> yeah, it's I've cool heard place, that. Yeah, you know? it is a it's, cool place. It's cool, but it's definitely not a Texas feel as much. It's a little right. bit. But, yeah, but that's, yeah, if you San want like Antonio a, is legit. <laughs> yeah, if you want like a farm to table restaurant, you definitely go to Austin, not San Antonio. Right. <laughs> well, so let's see, 42 years old. Uh, and by the way, I really appreciate you doing the podcast version here because you know, oh, I appreciate you too. And, you know. <laughs> I mean, I don't have anything uh, to hide. I don't think. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Well, and did you get my PDF? I also sent that a little bit later. I did. Than I usually I'm, do. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Okay, good. Yeah. So what we'll do, of course, we'll just go through that. And uh, you know, you have pretty good genes. There's definitely some stuff here that I think matches up with the issues that you're having. Okay. Um. And. And obviously that'll all come up as we go along. So we'll go down the five sections, brain optimization, diet, um, <clears throat> let's see, uh, detox, vitamins, hormone detox, that would be the third section. Fourth section, uh, let's see, <laughs> what is the fourth section? I- of course we got sleep coming at the very end and I know you right. mentioned you had some sleep issues. Oh, gym is the fourth section, sorry, so training. Okay. Would be number four. 
It's early. It's early in the morning here. What time? Are you in Pacific time zone? <laughs> no, Central time zone. So it's seven thirty. Oh, it's for the me. same as me. Uh, yep, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I was out late last night because I had, a, I had a couple friends over. We were actually shooting carp with a bow and arrow. Interesting. <laughs> have you ever have you even heard about this? No, I don't think so. It's crazy. Basically, there's car there's a fish called carp, and they destroy the eggs of other fish. Uh huh. Like the trout and everything, and they're invasive. They're from you know they're from Asia, I think originally, and they just take over like wildfire in these lakes and rivers, and. You you ha you have a bow and arrow just like a normal bow and arrow, but this the arrow is actually made of fiberglass and it has a 200 pound test string attached to the end of the arrow. And you shoot the arrow and it has a barb on the end and you shoot it through the fish. So when you walk around on the stream and you look for fish and you shoot them, and it ha because it has a barb, you can pull them back in. Interesting. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty insane. Like. <laughs> It's the biggest conversation started because I was actually with my daughter yesterday on the bike trail and she did 15 miles with her rollerblades. Wow. Yeah, which is crazy. My feet are still like hurting from that because they vibrate so much. Yeah. But, but when we were on the bike trail, we came over this uh, stream and we saw all these big carp and I actually put it up on my Instagram story and I was like, man, look at all these big fish. And then my buddy contacted me and was like, I'm coming down right now. <laughs> <laughs> and because it's hard to find, it's kind of seasonal, you know, they don't school up like that all the time. So when you find them schooled up, you got to take advantage. And we spent literally like four or five hours. And I think we shot about 70 of them. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it was insane. My kids are just having a blast. They were like slinging carp. They had blood everywhere because, you know, you shoot a hole in these fish and then there's blood and the kids were like getting all tackling these big fish and piling them up and oh my gosh it's, it's pretty crazy <laughs> my daughter hates hurting animals so she would not be down yeah. for that she would cry right <laughs> yeah yeah my kids they kind of grew up around it because I always you know I've always been a hunter uh-huh but yeah I definitely understand it when little kids you know I mean there's a lot of you know uh Disney Disneyification or whatever you'd want to call it where they see these pretend animals you know talking and whatever but my kids didn't get exposed to that they got exposed to the other extreme where they watch me butcher animals and fillet fish <laughs> and just kind of living outdoors <laughs> that's cool though i mean that's kind of like hey, that might be the way the world's going so your family might last yeah right right, <laughs> right. <laughs> i hope not <laughs> no i mean too <laughs> oh man well so yeah let's jump into the brain section and okay. the the main uh backdrop that's important is that in every cell in our body, we actually have two copies of DNA. Um, the only cells that don't have two copies of DNA are egg and sperm cells, they have one copy. So of course, when egg and sperm cells fuse together, that's where you get the copy of DNA from your mother and the copy of DNA from your father. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so that's, that's also where you get this plus, 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 minus thing on the report. Okay. So like if you're looking down, you see the first gene is plus, plus, C, E, T, P. Uh-huh. Um, so that what that means, it means you got that version of the gene from your mother and the, and from your father. And generally, to simplify it, I say you got a bad version of the gene, right? If it's a plus, it generally means bad If on my report. Okay. Uh, because I'm not looking for good genes, right? Like you have thousands of good genes. Right. But I only want to find your bad genes because we can figure out how to fix them if we know the real, pro the real cause, you know, right. what's really bad about it. Okay. And so a plus plus means you got a bad version of the gene from your father and a bad version from your mother. Whereas a plus minus would mean you got a bad version from one parent, but then a good version of that gene from your from the other parent. Okay. So the plus minuses aren't as problematic, right? Because you okay. do have that one good version. Okay. I mean, again, the minus minuses don't even come up on this report, right? Because we we'd have thousands of pages. It would be what's the point of me making a report? With <laughs> right. All of the good genes. Um, <laughs> So that first gene, plus plus CETP, it's actually a cholesterol transporter. It does give you an increased risk for Alzheimer's, but it's only if your triglycerides are high. Okay. So, you know, I recommend just pulling out your blood work at some point and looking to see if it's below that number that I put there. Um, if it's high, if it happens to be above 125, um, I would do more cardio. You know, I'd recommend more cardio, more exercise. Okay. 
that's a really effective, that's by far the most effective way to bring down triglycerides. <clears throat> okay. So, you know, and I talk to people, believe me, people can be high, just most of the people that are like 500, they'll be basically sedentary at work all day and then they come home and watch Netflix all night, right? I doubt you're at 500, but you know, some it, it's easy to creep up above the optimal range a little bit. And for you, again, you definitely don't want to be high. Okay. Okay. Um, so worth checking. You, get, you, you don't have to check right now if you have blood work. Just go through it later. If you don't, make sure they check your triglycerides at some point. And that's different than the LDL, you know? Right. Yeah, I've got to get out of the military healthcare system and get real blood work done soon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, when they, I know you mentioned in your email that you had factor five. Yes. Um, and that definitely comes up on your genes. We'll talk about it. Okay. Have they been doing uh, like some kind of a platelet number or some kind of a prothrombin time test or something like that? You know, when, test? when I was first, when I, well, I had a DVT after my daughter was born 10 years mm -hmm. ago and that's, mm -hmm. I didn't, but I didn't find out I had factor five for like a year because we were overseas. Mm -hmm. So yeah. because of the DVT, they just put me on um, like Lovenox and then Coumadin. Right. And then when we came back to the States, I got like the genetic testing, which is when I found mm -hmm. out I had the factor five. So right. because I had the factor five and I'd already had a blood clot, they pretty, they just said, okay, you're on blood thinners for life, which is frustrating mm -hmm. to me. I don't like anything for life, right. um, you know, but for like seven years I took Coumadin and mm -hmm. it was very hard to maintain my INR. Like it was just, it was never consistent. It was always all over the place. And right. I kept getting what I thought was really bad medical advice, like stay away from vitamin K, don't eat too many green vegetables, which I felt like was really bad medical advice, but that's what <laughs> they say. And so about two and a half, three years ago, I found a doctor before we left San Diego that had, you know, said, okay, you can stop taking Coumadin. She put me on and now the word escapes me what medicine I'm on. It's a heart. Mm. Uh, it's a it's a blood thinner, but I for, can't think of the name at the moment. But it's what they put sure. like heart tr heart transplant patients on or whatever, and so I don't have sure, to worry sure. about like my INR, which is such a that was such right. a pain because I I felt like I was failing all the time because I was trying to do what they said, which I felt was unhealthy, but mm -hmm. to try to keep my INR regular because they kept telling me if your INR is all over the place, that's not healthy, and True. so I yeah. would try to limit green vegetables, which is like counterproductive I feel like but yeah it was right, just a right. mess so I did that yeah. whole thing for a while but now that I'm on this blood thinner and I've been doing this for like three years I just take it twice a day and they don't really check anything which mm -hmm. I don't really think is great but you know I would love to one day like I, I know you know my friend Justin Nault that's how yeah. I heard it. that's oh, how yeah. I, that's how oh. I know of you is because of Justin yeah, <laughs> yeah. and so shout out to Justin yeah, first episode He's awesome. Yep. So mm -hmm. he he doesn't like that he doesn't like that I've been told to do that for life. But you mm -hmm. know he's not mm -hmm. a doctor, so he always says I need to find a functional right. medicine doctor. So I really do need to find one because mm -hmm. I, there's got to be another answer than for me taking blood thinners. And my daughter actually has factor five Leiden. Like we had her, mm. she had to get a blood test like when she was about five or six for some other reason. Like I think it was a to see if she had a gluten issue or whatever. And I was like, hey, mm -hmm. while y'all are in there, can you check her factor five? And she has it. So like, I want right. to know what to do for me as well as what to do for her, for her life, you know? Sure. Well, just identifying it is a, is a really important thing because, so it, does heart disease run in your family from that perspective? No, I mean, the only person that I know that had a heart issue was like my grandpa I'm on my mom's mm -hmm. side that, but he died when I was like five. Okay. And so I don't really know all the details of his issue. I just know that he had heart problems. Right. So that's the well, only person down. that I know of. Yeah, normally I don't jump ahead too much, but let's just jump down to heart disease because I have the factor five in there, of course. It came up on your genetic screen. Okay. And it's it's just on the next couple pages. It's on page five if you're looking at the top of the PDF. Okay. But, you know, there's a number of heart disease categories. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, F5 is, is uh, one of them. Okay. Or one of one of the genes. Do you see that one? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And I mean, yours is only a plus minus, meaning at least you didn't have the plus plus, right? Mm -hmm. So you do have a good copy of the gene. Obviously, it's still having an impact. And even a plus minus here, it gives you a fourfold higher risk of thrombosis, which you've obviously experienced. Right. Um, 
And you know, when you're pregnant and all that kind of thing, of course the estrogen goes way up and then and it swings way back down. After you have a baby, there's all, all kinds of additional risk there. Right. As you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was like not very active when I was pregnant because I have I have had migraines almost my whole life. And mm, I was yep. just absolutely miserable almost the entire time I was pregnant. Oh. So I was oh. very much like on the couch, miserable, like living a vampire life in the dark. <sighs> You know, right. and so I'm sure Jeez. that that did not help the situation, mm -hmm. you know, and I had never been like my whole life up to that point. I had never been that inactive. So I don't know if that right. had anything to do with just all those compounding things, you know. Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. Exercise is the best drug for everything. Right. But, right. <laughs> but I mean, of course, on this on this recommendation here that I have, you know, I mentioned baby aspirin, grapeseed extract curcumin, ginger, uh, or ginkgo, uh, ginkgo bilboa, or mm -hmm. biloba, mm -hmm. excuse me. I, I rarely recommend ginkgo, but in this case, you know, all of those that I just listed, um, they definitely thin your blood. Like I've got a friend, Danny Vega. Um, he's down in Florida, great guy. He has a podcast, you know. He's overdosed on curcumin before just by throwing too much in his smoothie, and he talks about how it thins your blood pretty dramatically. Oh, wow. <laughs> And I've personally done the exact same thing with grapeseed extract. Okay. Um, a similar situation. I was just testing out different brands of supplements and putting too much in my smoothies. And I ended up, I was on a podcast being interviewed and I had a scab that just kind of broke open. And it was like bleeding the entire time I was being interviewed. And I was trying to like hold on to it. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Yeah. So it definitely, and that's freaky, right? Because once you thin your blood too much, then you're trying to figure out, you're kind of panicky, right? It's like, well, I, can't, I definitely have to stay away from everything that's remotely thinning for my blood. Yeah. Well, and they always so, tell me, like, don't, you know, don't, I guess pretty much since I started taking blood thinners, they're always like, be careful when you're cutting things, you know? So, like, when I'm in the kitchen, mm -hmm. I'm, like, super paranoid to, like, cut myself. Or, <sighs> you know, like, right. don't, don't well, take up rugby. Well, internal bleeding. <laughs> well, definitely. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's it. I mean, rugby would give you... A risk for internal bleeding which is even more dangerous because you don't know what's going on right um, but I don't think you have to thin it that much I mean that's where a good functional doctor would be imperative because you can use these natural supplements like curcumin if your stomach can handle it and it probably can you've got great genetics for intestinal health and or ginger or things, things like that okay and you just the thing is you don't want to stack them you want to take one of them you know right <laughs> and you want to take a pretty high dose but you have to basically you know you have to wean off the one you're on and bump up on the one that, that would be optimal here and right I'd say like grapeseed extract i mean that's increased lifespan you know that's one of the side effects there <laughs> right. oh hey that's not a bad side effect right so there's a lot of benefits f for getting on one of these natural blood thinners but mm -hmm. there's a little bit there's a lot less uh medical literature on exactly what the dose is and this and that but the thing is because you're plus minus i don't think it's as bad of a risk as the doctors are making it out right and i've never thought again, so either but you know right. any anytime you tell at least in my my experience anytime you tell a regular medical doctor especially a military one that you mm -hmm. don't want to do what they're telling you to do you can sure. just see them like shut down <laughs> and you're just right. like can i get my prescription and leave and you feel like if you don't just say yes to everything they're not going to give you what you need so right. yeah, it's, yeah. I've definitely got to get out of that system for sure. Yeah. My brother's a doctor. My dad's a doctor. I know how it goes. Right. And I mean, part of it is that the system is flawed in, in general because it's, it's a business. They're trying to rush people in and out. Right. You know, a lot of the old school doctors want to be seen as like a parental figure and just, they just want to tell everybody what to do and, and just have people nodding and just following along <laughs> blindly. Right. Like right. a sheep. <laughs> Nowadays with the internet, you know, there's enough information. A lot of that stuff, you can find better information, you know, if you really dig into certain things. And Right. This is one of those examples, right? I mean, I love the idea of going with a natural supplement. I don't think your blood has to be so thin that you're at a risk for uh, internal bleeding. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think that sounds like um, a great idea either. Yeah, or even cutting yourself, you know, and... So anyways, that, I think that's a really important one. Thankfully, you're just a plus minus, you know. Right. Yeah, that's good. Um, and the other heart disease risk genes you have aren't too bad. Like that, that next gene on here, LPA, I mean, that's another one related to triglycerides. So keep those down mm -hmm. and, and you're fine. 
And then the final one, as long as we're on the topic of heart disease, um, it's S-E-L-E, -E, which is actually a, a lectin binding gene. Okay. Um, and that one's almost as bad as the, the factor five gene in terms of heart disease. It's, it's basically, a, it's called selectin is the name of the gene. Okay. Um, and it, it binds lectins and increases risk for inflammation. And again, it's another fourfold risk for heart disease basically plaques in your arteries, but it's related to lectins. And I don't know if you've heard of lectins or read no, anything No, Justin, Justin says how bad they are all the time. So that's, that's really oh, all sure. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a doctor, um, his name is, well, I, I think I list, yeah, I list him in the paragraph on the PDF that he sent you. Yeah, the Plant Paradox book. You got it. Yeah, yeah I don't Stephen have that Gundry. book, but I, it's on my list to get. Yeah. In this case, for sure. And he's a friend of mine, and we've talked for a long time. He came to Mayo Clinic and gave a talk, Stephen Gundry. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's a great book, particularly if you have these genes, like, like this particular one. Um, but he basically thinks lectins are evil for everybody. Right? Like <laughs> lectins are the devil is kind of the main thesis. Okay. And for most people, it's not that big of a deal. Right. right? I mean, one of the biggest sources of lectins is just grains or seeds because plants make lectins to, as toxins, right? They're basically plant toxins to make sure animals don't eat those plants. Right. You know, because plants can't get up and walk away if a predator comes by. So they right. have to create internal toxins so that the animal gets a little sick if they eat it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if people avoid grains, right? almost always they get healthier. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Despite the government's recommendations, <laughs> avoiding grains is healthy and in most cases. And, um, and so what, what he's seen, what Dr. Gundry sees, of course, is he removes people, he removes lectins from people's diet and they get healthier. Well, of course, right? <laughs> they're probably lowering their calories. They're avoiding all these carbs and grains. They're avoiding all these other inflammatory things like gluten. So, you know, so people love this. He sees it, he gets confirmation that his process is working. And then every once in a while, he finds somebody like you who actually has a lectin binding gene that increases inflammation. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you can literally reverse artery plaque. You, you have people with all kinds of artery plaque and it goes away. And I've personally seen this, you know, so I know it happens. Doctors wow. usually never see this because doctors always prescribe statins and they prescribe drugs that they never see the reversal of plaque because they don't change people's diet and that's right. the most powerful tool. You know? Right. So anyways, the point is like when you see somebody reverse plaque completely after they remove lectins, then you're a real believer, you know, and he's right. like a true believer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, for what it's worth, I'm not as worried about lectins as he is when you read the book, but for you, it's probably worth paying attention and tinkering with some of that, especially if you have plaque, you know, if you come, if you go in and you get a CT scan and you don't have any um, plaque in your arteries, honestly, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, but if, if you start coming up with a little bit of plaque, start cutting out those lectins more and more strict. Does that right. make sense? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's the hard to see. I mean, again, thankfully that's also a plus minus. Right. You know, that's why I'm kind of loose, loose on that. I'm not super strict either. Right. I'd be a little bit, I'd come down a little harder. I think if it was a plus plus. Um, so let's actually jump back to where we were in the brain section though, because okay. obviously I don't want to skip over all that. Right. Brain is important. Yeah. And the stress would be the next category that of course you have a plus plus. Oh yeah. Well, I could tell you that without the D <laughs> without all, the, without the, all the DNA analysis. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's a telling gene, right? It's, the, this is actually the oxytocin receptor and, uh, it basically indicates your brain is less able to handle stress than normal. Um, again, based on your oxytocin receptor. So anything that increases oxytocin, particularly when you're stressed out is, is beneficial. Okay. Um, and so of course I linked an article there. I'm a scientific advisor for that website that's linked there. And mm -hmm. it's got a great, it's a great resource for just listing all the different ways that you can increase oxytocin. The website's called Self Hacked. Okay. And I think that particular article is called like 34 ways to naturally increase oxytocin. I'm not sure, but okay. there's a lot of ways. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
And dark chocolate is one of them, so that's an easy one. If you're going into a stressful situation, you can, you know, you can have some dark chocolate. Excuse me. Um, but again, it helps to do that. That's a good target to specifically, you know, try and decrease stress. <laughs> yeah, well, knowing both my parents, like, I, they're both have been gone for a long time, but mm-hmm. knowing both of them and their life up till the time that they passed away, there, I could tell that's a plus plus because they're both sure both were stressed in, in different ways, but you know. Right, right. Yeah, it's tough too because some people, um, they have pretty good genes. Or, or maybe plus minus. Again, you have a plus plus, right? But um, some people even have a plus minus, and they see a pretty dramatic impact here. And a lot of it, it can be exacerbated by just the way you grew up. You know, if your parents were freaking out over little things, then you kind of learn to freak out over little things. I'm not saying you specifically. I'm just saying anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and which is an important aspect of parenting. You know, like <laughs> like if your kid falls down and hurts his knee or whatever. It, if the parents just go berserk, you know, and you can see <gasps> like that, you know, and, <laughs> and they go running up and, and the parents are more afraid than the kid and the kid learns that behavior. Oh yeah. My husband yeah. like stops me from doing that all the time. He's like, <laughs> like he'll push me out of the way or like, you know, like distract my daughter so she doesn't see that I'm freaking out, you know? Right. <laughs> it's a hard thing. Yeah. Because as a parent, obviously, right. The, the instinct, even it's irrespective of the genes, the instinct is, you feel almost more pain than they do. When oh, they get that's hurt, so you know? true. And I told my husband, I'm like, you don't understand what it's like f- to be a mom. Like when you give birth mm. to that child, you literally mm. are hurt when they hurt. Like it's hard to explain. And he just kind of looks at me like I'm crazy. I'm just like, yeah. it. You can feel it in your bones when they get hurt. Sure. Oh man, sure. it's hard. I believe it. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, a good analogy is basically having a kid in general, right? Like before you have a child, you don't realize what it's like to have a child. You just can't. There's no way to describe it. Right. People won't understand. They think they kind of do, but you, you just don't. No, you don't. <laughs> it don't at all. And I'm sure it's similar with, with being a mother. It's another level. Right. Um, so, yeah, and then, of course, that anxiety gene you have as well. You can look at some of that stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a plus minus, so I'm not going to worry too much there, but you can tr- tinker with some of the stuff there. Okay. And thankfully, caffeine is burned really quick by your li- your liver breaks down caffeine really f- really fast. So. I saw that in like just the 23 and me thing because I yeah. am always one of those people that I can like drink something with caffeine in it right before bed and I don't mm. have any problem going to sleep, which yeah. I always felt like even <laughs> though that was true that it still was bad somehow, you know, but yeah, that I mean, makes probably sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, every I, I hear that all the time when people have this particular version of the gene. So obviously no issue there. I mean, some people have major anxiety from caffeine and you that's clearly not your weak spot in that regard. So I would focus more on the genes above that. Right, yeah, that's that's definitely something that's been an issue for me for at least the last 20 plus years. So I definitely oh, sure. need yeah. to get that under control. Right, well, like I say, I think serotonin is a big, uh, a big target. Uh, you know, obviously the oxytocin probably even bigger. I know mm-hmm. people that inject oxytocin, you know, which, so I obviously have crazy friends, you know, that are really extreme on stuff like this. Not literally crazy, just, no, just willing to try anything. I know. And I, I, know I, I listened to a lot people. of them probably like, right. Exactly. Ben, like Ben Greenfield. I don't know. Exactly. He's kind of crazy. And then Justin mm-hmm. is his own version of crazy. You know, so like, you oh know, yeah, I think he tries not to freak a lot of us out beca- with his craziness. But right. you know, it's it's an interesting thing, right? When you're <laughs> when you're tinkering with how these these pulleys and levers and things work, you know, it's 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 a hobby on some level as well as a passion, and, and it works, you know. So you, you kind of get caught up in it, and yeah, when well, a lot of the know. weird stuff Justin talks about, I'm like, let me wait till my husband's not active duty anymore to go right. down some of these rabbit holes with you because I feel like, sure. you know, he's got, he's got a, we got to maintain some semblance of normal while he's active sure. duty and like under the military umbrella. But when he retires, like all bets are off. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, yeah. So diet's the next section. Um, and that the first couple of genes, again, I'm not worried. You can look through the paragraph, but it has plus minuses. I'm not too worried. Okay. Um, Literally everybody has some type 2 diabetes risk of genes, it seems like. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess not literally everybody, but 
90 plus percent of people and it's it's an indicator that humans aren't uh, aren't just aren't built to eat loads of carbs right <laughs> right so eating loads of carbs probably not a good idea do you, have you ever checked your blood sugar like fasted um i haven't i mean i have the thing at, at home to do it i i mm -hmm. guess i'm kind of nervous let me just be honest because justin told me this recently because i am not 100 percent on the clovis thing all the time mm -hmm. especially during this quarantine i've been extra stressed mm -hmm. you know so i wanted right. to get some blood work because you know he's got like links to all these like discounted blood works of course i need to find a functional medicine doctor to get that done but you know i was gonna go get it done and he was just like i caution you because he knows me very well he's mm -hmm. like i caution mm -hmm. you to make sure that you're committed 100 percent to the clovis diet before mm -hmm. you go get blood work because you're going to get it and probably be really disappointed. Mm -hmm. And then you have to be committed to the diet to fix everything. So he basically sure. cautioned me. He's like, don't go get any blood work done until you're 100% committed. And I'm just like, okay, <laughs> sure, <laughs> you know, sure. because I, I'm probably, probably a lot of these things that you mentioned in here are probably not great numbers right now for me. It might be surprised. I mean, you're, your ability to deal with carbs is better than most people, to be honest. Okay. I'm not saying you should go load up on carbs. I mean, you have some genes here for sure. And part of that equation is exercise. Uh-huh. Because, of course, you know, even if your body can handle carbs better than most people, if you're not doing intense exercise, then they tend to store up as fat in your body more. Right. And you're by no means fat or anything like that. You're by no means obese, you know, but... You know, it's just true for anybody, right? right? You can be super lean. Even even a lot of these really, quote-unquote, skinny people, they're being redefined now as skinny fat. Because right. Because there's so much fat around their organs. Mm -hmm. They look skinny. They look healthy. They're actually not. So, right. you know, I think intense exercise <laughs> helps. And, of course, we'll, we'll talk about some exercise stuff in the gym section. But, okay. But, again, you actually have pretty good genes here. And, um, and then, of course, the next lineup of genes are all intermittent fasting genes right? i saw that and it was that was interesting to me because i function better like my husband always you know he's well we're both i'm a former military he's in the military but like mm -hmm. i don't like to eat until like nine or ten in the morning like i'm not even hungry and he's mm -hmm. always like breakfast is the most important meal of the day uh, you know get mm -hmm. up at 5 30 and have something to eat <laughs> and i'm just like i have to i'm not even close to hungry so that's really cool right. because I feel like I kind of do at least 12 or 13 hours of fasting a day anyways, mm -hmm. because I'm just not hungry till like nine or 10 in the morning. Right. Perfect. I, I agree with you. I mean, of course it does matter. Do the genetics do matter, but in general, I think breakfast is the least important meal of the day. <laughs> it might even be the most detrimental meal of the day for mo a lot of people. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, Ideally, if you can even wait until noon and just have lunch straight up, you know, that would even be better, probably. Okay, I'll try that. Um, especially if your blood sugar is above 90, right? Okay. Like when you do stick your finger and check your blood sugar, it's probably not as bad as you think. But again, you want to do that fasted when you wake up. You don't want to do that after you eat or something. Right. At least initially to get an understanding of where your baseline blood sugar is. Just take it for a few days after you wake up. Make sure it's below 90. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, these genes are all pretty, you know, pretty straightforward. Intermittent fasting is definitely important. I mean, we can go through the mechanism. Like the, the gene called ADIPOQ, adiponectin, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a hormone that helps your body burn fat, right? So you definitely want plenty of that hormone, but you, your body makes less of that hormone. <laughs> okay, so, so because I'm plus plus, it makes less of that? That's what correct. that means? Okay. That's the, that's the quote unquote bad part of it, right? Okay. But the, the good news is intermittent fasting increases the production of that hormone. Okay. So that's a strong argument for intermittent fasting, right? You want to make more of this hormone that helps you burn fat. I mean, my husband's you know. all about the science. Here's the science as to why I can right. skip breakfast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's funny. I gave a talk for the special forces recently, and I mentioned intermittent fasting as a good thing, you know, as a beneficial thing for a lot of people, specifically because I do these genetic things, and I look at people's genes, and a lot of people they benefit from intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. you know? And you should have seen the room, like, <laughs> it was all these, like, nutrition leaders and all these people, uh, and, you know, I'd say maybe 100 people at least in this particular room, and then there was conference, 
rooms other places with screens but everybody just started buzzing it was like a beehive because <laughs> you know they have a lot of disagreement about whether or not they should be intermittent fasting and i kind of just casually threw it out there and I, then i i realized what a hot debated topic that is in that particular oh yeah group. i mean because they're all up at four eating breakfast like that's the right. military you know especially special forces are probably up <laughs> even earlier than that eating breakfast yeah well and and not only that they're training really intense right and there is an argument to be made, right? If you're, if you're at that level of training, you know, you're probably going to see some, uh, some performance decrease mm -hmm. you know, if you're intermittent fasting, if you're skipping breakfast, because it's hard to get that amount of calories to replace the ones you're burning and all this kind of thing. Right. But even there, there's still some positive arguments, you know, so um, it just depends on the situation. You can't be at your peak performance all at all times you know right like nobody can deadlift a thousand pounds week in and week out like there's a guy named uh, uh i want to say thor but it's his last name is bjornison i think mm -hmm. Boy, how am i breaking out his name let me see if i can google it really quick uh half thor that's what it is <laughs> half thor julius bjornson bjornson Okay. He, I think he literally just broke the deadlift record uh, yesterday. Um, he like he deadlift over a thousand pounds, which is wow. crazy. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's where your blood pressure is just so extreme. You get a bloody nose and all this kind of thing. But you know, he. I mean, if you're, you can't do that. He can't go and do that next week. You know what I mean? Like now, he's just completely not deadlifting. I guarantee it. You know, right. I guarantee it. He's, <laughs> He's, he's just taking some time off, letting his joints recover, because he just maxed out. You know, he just went berserk on this deadlift. Right. And that's how the human body works. You can't perform at the absolute peak. You, you go in cycles, you know. Mm -hmm. You go up, you go down, you take a deload. Uh, so, anyways, even for people at that level, at the special forces level, you know, there's an argument you could make for intermittent fasting for a lot of them. Yeah, and I'll never be able to tell what my husband's gene is for that because, you know, he's the military guy, like, nobody's getting my DNA, you know. Ah, uh, right. Like, you know, they might test, I don't know what he thinks is going to happen, but, sure. like, the military is actually cautioned to yep. not do the DNA testing. And I'm just like, man, wouldn't that be yep. so cool? But They did that. Yeah, they did that because of me. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> because I talked to a lot of the high, higher ups there, and they were going to do it. They were talking about doing everybody and this and that, and they had a lot of discussion and debate about it. And then, uh, and they were gonna, you know, like I say, we were gonna do it all uh, confidentially and this and that. And, and then they they made a decision not to, and then they, they sent out all these notices. So probably a year ago, and, and you know, at least a year ago, and, ever, and everybody, again, they sent out basically a blanket statement and the media picked it up and everything said, don't, we're not going to do 23 and me. We recommend it against it. Basically, we don't, we don't allow it for the special forces, I think. Oh, boy. Well, and part of it, you know, it makes sense because if you're doing something like designing a virus, you know, um, you can actually design a virus to target certain genetic weak spots or certain, certain races, you know. Kind of like the it, coronavirus. Yeah, well, <laughs> the corona is unique, right? Because it kind of targets everybody. I mean, people from China are getting hurt from it. People right. from Italy. I mean, but the example of Italy might be interesting because, of course, everybody smokes there. Mm -hmm. there so that kind of makes them high risk. But there might be some genetic factors as well that are increasing their risk even more. Mm. And like, like, the exa like, for example, the coronavirus, it binds a receptor called ACE2, ACE2. And there's 15 different genetic versions of ACE2. So you might have one of the genetic versions where the coronavirus barely binds, it barely sticks to your cells, and your body just kind of gets rid of it, no big deal, right? Mm -hmm. So you kind of, you test positive for it, but you had no symptoms. You hear about this all the time, right, right? Right, Or you might have a version of that ACE2 receptor that picks up the coronavirus and it sticks really tightly. It's like glue. Right. And then, of course, every, every coronavirus that your body gets in contact with it just sticks to it and it really causes major effects. Well, and then you're going to have, you know, the two weeks of coughing and it's pretty miserable and a fever and all that. And that's genetic, right? But of course, one of the arguments against China designing this virus as a, 
you know, bioterror weapon or something, is if they were going to do that, because Chinese, the population is pretty similar genetically, mm -hmm. right? They would have designed a virus that doesn't hurt the Chinese and it hurts everybody else. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's very like, true. That's kind of common sense. If, you, if you're really going to do it for that purpose, you don't make it so it hurts your own people. Right. Especially when you have a group of people that are pretty similar in a lot of ways in their genetics, like the Chinese are. Right. So, you know, that's, that's the thing. So if you have a bunch of special forces operators, if you have their DNA, in theory, you could design a virus or something that could attack them in a pretty specific way, but leave your own people alone. Now, right. my, my issue with that is, you know, there's so much homogeneity, like there's so much heterogeneity, there's so much variation in people in the special, like in the U.S. it's such a melting pot, pot mm -hmm. that you, you know, it's a kind of a weak argument to say that could happen. Well, and it's so funny, because like I joke with my husband all the time, I, I think it's funny that they caution the military doing that, except like when I was active duty and my, my husband... We both have had like so many anthrax shots <laughs> from mm, different time. We, yeah. And I, I always joke with him, like, we're going to be like 80 years old and we're going to wake up <laughs> next to each other. And like, you know, I joke, you know, because he's already bald on purpose. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going to wake up like 70, 80 years old and like all my hair is going to be gone and like some other weird <sighs> thing. And we're going to trace it back to all those anthrax vaccines right. that we had to get, you know. And so I just think it's funny the military makes them paranoid about that. But then they pump you full of so much stuff when you're active duty that you don't, you can't say no to. Right. I just think that's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there's ways around it for sure. You know, like I've offered to basically buy the DNA kits myself. This was my solution, right? I was going to buy the DNA kits for everybody in the special forces and then give them numbers, you know, like mm -hmm. one through a thousand or whatever, just random numbers and then pass them out and then give them to the leaders and the leaders have people spit in the tubes and send them back to me and all this. And then I give them to 23 and me. So it's all under my name, right? It looks like right. I've done my DNA a thousand times. <laughs> yeah. Right? And I don't even need to know the names of the guys, you know? Right. And then I can still talk with them or give them the reports. And, and that's what actually was kind of the plan. But again, a lot of people don't understand genetics and how it works. Right. So there's always that fear. If you don't understand it, let's just be safe. And yeah. I understand it, but I'm saying like, obviously not everybody there understands that that's not their main focus. So right. it just <laughs> turned out to basically be a blanket statement against it. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand that. Well, and just based on, you know, the history, like with my husband, like he would, he would naturally not be open to doing it anyways then add mm -hmm. on to the military telling him not to it's sure, like it makes it even a, easier. a done yeah. deal <laughs> right well it'll be interesting for him to hear this this podcast right yeah i'm excited to show Unless him he's about... sitting right there yeah yeah no I, it's funny a lot of a lot of spouses sit right there of course in this case you probably have an earbud in right i do have an earbud in so i was going to ask you are we am i going to be able to hear both sides of this podcast one time correct of course okay. yeah so i'll i'm recording on my end um, with also a headphone a headset in. Okay. And then um, what I'll do is once you mail me the uh, the recording device, I'll put them. I'll merge the two tracks together so it's high quality for both of us. Oh, okay, cool. The problem with most podcasts, and I've been on a million of them, is whoever's the host has great recording equipment, and then they Skype in the next person or whatever. And the guest who's just on Skype, it's kind of a fuzzy Skype track, right? Right. And it just doesn't sound good, and it's kind of irritating after a while to listen to. Um, so that's why I'm trying this. Hopefully it works. Yeah, hopefully it works. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, then he can at least hear it. Um, so metformin is the next category that you have some plus pluses. Okay. Have you ever heard of metformin? I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Yeah, well, a lot of people are talking about it now because in most animal studies, like with different species of animals and whatnot, it increases lifespan. So a lot of people are excited about it just for that reason. And I don't, it's a prescription drug, which is kind of obnoxious because it's base, it's derived from a French, the French lilac plant. Okay. So it's basically a natural plant supplement, but they've managed to make it a prescription. So it's really irritating and hard to get. In a lot okay. of countries, it's not a prescription, but here in America, yeah, you gotta right. go and of course. convince a doctor to give you a drug. 
Um, and the side effects often include diarrhea if you take too much in particular or if you have poor genetics, which you don't, by the way. Okay. But it helps lower blood sugar, it increases your metabolism, and probably increases your lifespan. So the so me having the plus plus in both of those, that's a good thing. This is actually a good gene, right? Okay. Yep, I definitely have some good genes on here once in a while because this is a good solution, right? Be if your blood sugar happens to be of above 90 and you really struggle to get it down, this is like a cheat code, you know? You can just take metformin. Okay. Um, and it helps. So that's a factor you can, you can consider that. Okay. Yeah, and then heart disease we already went through, right? Right. And the CRP, you've probably checked CRP before on blood tests. It's worth kind of keeping an eye on it, but it's a plus minus, so I don't think we need to worry about that. And the leaky gut section as well, you know, you can follow whatever um, suggestions there if you feel like you've got some issues here and there. But to be honest, you've got phenomenal gut genes, which is actually okay. pretty rare. That, that I'm surprised to hear that because I've always assumed I don't have good gut genes because of all the issues that I've had in life. Right. No, I think the, I think some of the anxiety stuff, and the, I think a lot of that is more related to actual brain genes. Okay. Um, most people, it's not, but in your case, I think it actually is. Okay. Did you do it? Is this Ancestry or Twenty Three and Me? Twenty Three and Me. Okay. Yeah, because Twenty Three and Me is pretty thorough here. Um, so yeah, and and you know, of course, if we switch to the next section, which is vitamins, hormones, and detox. Mm hmm. There's a lot of other stuff, you know, um, including vitamin D, right? Which is the first one that comes up as a bunch of plus pluses. No, that's a bad. <clears throat> no, I have in the past tested really mm -hmm. low for vitamin D. Exactly. And so <laughs> that's, that's not surprising. Like I haven't had my mm -hmm. vitamin D tested in a very long time, but like just because mm -hmm. of all the Corona stuff, like I've been making mm -hmm. sure that, you know, I'm outside every day just cause that, right. you know, people keep saying that, but like, that's mm -hmm. not surprising. And I know that that does affect like your, I don't know, like your, your gut lining. Yeah. Well, for and, sure. And different mm -hmm. things like, um, what am I trying to think? Like your, your, not your, yeah, your mood and like your energy levels I've been told in the past. So that's not surprising. Right. So I need to figure out, um, ways to, you know, need to look at your recommendations. I have been taking like yeah. 10,000 IU of vitamin D every day during this Corona thing, just cause that's one of the things that Justin had recommended anyways. Sure. So maybe yeah. I'm better now than I ever have been. <laughs> oh yeah, 10,000 is up at the higher end. Yeah, you'll be, you'll be good there. Um, and that's specifically in these paragraphs, right? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, that's another one you definitely wanna check on your blood test. And to be honest, the dose might be a little different in the summer than it is in the winter, because if you're out all the time getting sunshine, you can take the lower end of that range, and the range I have on that paragraph is 2,000 up to 10,000, somewhere in that range. Uh huh. Um, but just what I like to do is have people like in January or February take a consistent dose for a month and then get their blood checked, and then you kind of know this dose gives me this blood test, right? Right, okay. Um, whereas, of course, if you're out in the sun, five hours one day and then the next day one hour and the next day three hours you know what i mean and the next day it's raining of course in san antonio it never rains but you know what i mean like if you're hey, all over the place it rains more frequently <laughs> here than you'd think yeah yeah i mean i believe it i'm just kidding <laughs> but but you know what i mean like it, but basically how much sunshine you get kind of jumps up and down right and then the the levels of vitamin d is so choppy it's hard to tell right and i didn't know about this don't take d3 in the evening thing because Right. I'm not following that advice up until today. Yeah. Now I am. <laughs> yeah, right. It definitely seems to just, a lot of people are more sensitive. Some people are more sensitive than other people, but it definitely inhibits melatonin. And it, I've seen it disrupt so many people's sleep. So take it right away in the morning. Okay. Um, with fat, preferably. Okay. So this is an argument for getting a little bit of fat, you know, with your, do you drink coffee? I guess you said you drink coffee, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, or I'm not. Or you can drink it, you said in the evening. Yeah, I mean, plus like some of the, like one of the protein powders that I take, that I usually mm -hmm. use for morning has caffeine in it. Sure. I mean, you could wait until noon. You'd be fine at noon because I do, I do think intermittent fasting is really critical. Okay. Um, just for optimizing and, you know, getting vitamin D with some butter or something like that is better for uptake. If okay. You just take it by itself with water. You're just not going to get much out of it. What about like MCT oil? Exactly. Perfect. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. And the, and the paragraph, of course, mentions the importance of K2 along with vitamin D. Okay. Um, which helps you keep the calcium out of your arteries. Okay. So that's, uh, you know, always a good thing too, especially when you're taking higher doses. Right, okay. Yeah, and then the estrogen, right? Like, then you have some great genes. And of course, estrogen lights up, which it does for most people, just so you know. So it's not like you're on an island by yourself here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you definitely have a tendency towards some higher estrogen issues. And, and again, that's probably a big contributor for that thrombosis. Okay. You know, so you have the factor five and then you have these estrogen genes and they're kind of playing off each other. Um, I mean, you'd be surprised how many people on birth control have thrombosis just from birth control. Well, and that's know? the thing. I took birth control for so many years. Mm, and yep. that's that's one of the things I wanted to know about the factor five, like for mm. my daughter, you know, obviously she's mm -hmm. 10, so she's not worried, we're not worried about birth control right now. But like as she gets right. older, you know, I never knew I had it. So I took all kinds of birth control before I got pregnant. Right. You know, I don't it's want probably, to... yeah, I'm sure that's what really is triggering it. A lot of that, you know, a lot of that combined with, I mean, it's a bad combo when you've got factor five plus these estrogen gene issues. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, if I have a plus plus, well, obviously mm -hmm. like she's going to have a plus. At least one plus. Exactly. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And it's, it's impossible to tell. People ask me almost every day. It's like, can I tell which parent gave me which gene? It's like not, not in the DNA code. You know, mm, okay. Like if both parents have a plus plus, then all the kids have plus pluses. But if both parents have a plus minus, <laughs> mm, all okay. bets are off, right? Because you you could have given them the plus, you each could have given them the minus, you could have given them a plus minus. Okay. So it's, but she, yeah, she'll definitely have, you know, some of these. Your husband might have some. Who knows? Okay. But the sauna, the sauna really helps. Well, um, that supports my um, wanting to buy a personal sauna for the house. <laughs> yeah, you should. I love saunas. They're so I, good. For, I was going yeah. a few times a week before the whole Corona thing. And then I just, mm -hmm. I stopped going because I don't, like I got paranoid of, are they cleaning them and all the things right. that I didn't think yeah. about before. So I'm just like, mm -hmm. that, that's going to be my, my retirement present to myself when my husband retires nice. is to buy yeah. my own sauna for the garage. Good. Now I have yep. scientific evidence supporting that. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you for sure do. <laughs> There's so many benefits. I mean, besides just sweating out, you know, like a lot of these artificial. I mean, the artificial estrogens, they've done these skin patch tests where it's like a nicotine patch without the nicotine. Mm -hmm. And they measure and they have people that go in saunas. They have groups of people that don't go in saunas. And the groups of people that go in the saunas when they take off those patches and they measure the chemicals on them, they're full of like BPA and phthalates and oxybenzone and all these nasty estrogens. Oh, wow. And the people that don't go in saunas don't have any of that, you know? Huh. Interesting. And what's really crazy about those studies, they call them BUS studies, blood, urine, sweat, BUS, B-U-S. Mm -hmm. What's crazy about the studies is um, they basically don't urinate any estrogen. Like they're not peeing it out, you know, mm. but you're sweating it out. Wow. And those artificial estrogens are far worse than the, you know, the natural. Natural estrogen is protective to a degree. You know, if it's way too high, then you get problems. But if it's, you know, if it's low, you also have problems. The real, the real, the worst case estrogens are the, the BPAs and things like that. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. Um, and I have started course. to read your book. Oh, yeah. But thanks. I'll be honest, yeah. it's super sciencey. And oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it's the same thing when I try to listen to Paul Saladino. I like sure. him a lot, but man, my brain is just like, I cannot, you know, I just can't, I, I listen and I'm just like, I think I'm going to have to listen to this 45 times before 1% right, right. of it sinks in. So I would just, I would just go to the top 10 list, you know? Yeah. And just look down the list. Obviously soy makes the list, you know, mm -hmm. even flax makes the list. Yeah, I remember telling my husband about that, and your when the part yep. that I understood of the <laughs> part of your book, I was like, "Babe, yeah. you know, because we used to put flaxseed in smoothies, you know, all the time." Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, yeah. So little things like that, like just look at that top ten list, and just you, you know, that's the key to focus in on. And it, I don't know if you know this, because a lot of people, that, you know, if you're just starting the book, you obviously wouldn't go ahead and look. But at the very end, of there's actually a summary. You can read like a five-page summary of the whole book. Okay, I need to skip to that part. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> I'm, I'm the author, and I, even I'm recommending it, so I think it's it just make your life easier. Okay, um, all right, I'll do that today. 
Yeah, because again, you're more sensitive. And then the next section is thyroid, right? Okay. And you definitely have some plus pluses here. Pretty common to have some issues. I think you have more than most people. Okay. And so supplementing iodine is always the fundamental here. Like you absolutely have to add iodine. Okay. It'll just help increase your metabolism, right? Because your thyroid hormones are probably pretty borderline. Pretty I've low. been told I had thyroid issues in the past. Like just, mm -hmm. you know, random blood tests at a doctor a few years back and he gave me like Synthroid. Is that a thyroid thing? Oh yeah. Oh sure. And I, yeah. I remember being so excited when he told me because he was like, oh, like tomorrow, I mean, he didn't really say tomorrow, but he's like, tomorrow you're going to have better energy and you're going to lose weight. Mm. And I was like, yes, finally, <laughs> you know, and I took it like, cause he gave me a bunch of samples. So I didn't have to fill a prescription and I took it for like three or four months, like mm -hmm. zero change, zero yeah. noticeable change. And I was so bummed and well, f <sighs> right. Well, yeah. the problem with Synthroid, right? Synthroid is basically T4. Okay. It's like a synthetic version of T4. Thyroid's confusing because you, your body starts with this hormone called T4, which again is dependent on iodine. So if you don't have enough iodine, you're not gonna make enough thyroid hormones. It's just the way it is. If you're deficient in iodine, you're definitely deficient in energy and all this other stuff because right. your body's deficient in thyroid hormones. And, and weight loss, you know, it helps to burn fat. Okay. So it's not something you want. So definitely take iodine. Okay. But what the issue with Synthroid, again, it's your thyroid makes T4 and then that gets converted to T3, which is the main one that helps you burn fat and all this. Okay. And that's confusing, right? Because instead of just being like T1 and then T2 and then T3, it's the opposite. It like starts at T4 and then goes down to T3. So it's super confusing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's kind yeah. of irritating the way they named the thyroid hormones. Right. But the main point with your genetics, do you see that at the top of the next page it says DIO1? Yes. That's a gene that's involved in the conversion of T4 to T3. Okay. And you don't do that conversion very well. So in other words, let's say you have plenty of T4, right, in your body. And most people, what they do with that is they turn it to turn, they convert it to T3 and that helps them burn fat. Okay. Right? Okay. For you, you don't do that conversion very well. So you just end up with a bunch of T4 sitting around in your body. Oh, okay. And Synthroid is a synthetic T4. Oh my gosh, so I got overloaded in the crap I don't want. Exactly. Well, it's not <laughs> crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, so that's why generally I avoid Synthroid. I mean, it, it, it's the, the, I, the reasoning behind it is like, let's take this synthetic T, this T4 and let your body manufacture T3 from it and kind of decide how much you need, right? Right, okay. So the logic makes sense, but with your genetics, it doesn't. Okay. And of course, they're not going to know that, right? Right, of course. But that's why I like Armour Thyroid, because it's full spectrum. It gives you all the thyroid hormones, and and your body does a pretty good job of deciphering which ones you need, <clears throat> okay. if you need to get on some. I mean, to be honest, you might be good if you just take iodine and exercise a lot, you know? But yeah, okay. You have some pretty rough genes here. You know, you might need to get on some Armour. I'm not afraid of that. A lot of people get major benefits. You feel amazing. It definitely bumps your energy. Um, I'm down for the feeling true. amazing part. However, yeah, I have to yeah, accomplish everything. that. <laughs> well, and I always tell people, and you know, if you're 80 years old, you, like as you age, your thyroid hormones decline, mm -hmm. right? And like, I, I think every 80 year old should be on some thyroid optimization probably, you know, but our system is set up to wait until your levels are absolutely in the toilet before they do anything about it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, who wants low energy? Right, and it doesn't I, make any sense. I've never, I've never, like, I have. Well, I don't know. I mean, genetically, if you know about ADHD, if the, anything showed that, but like, I've been told I have ADHD, and you know, mm -hmm. but I'm just like, they talk about like, you know, the hyperactivity. Mm -hmm. I'm like, my brain is hyperactive. My right. body has never been hyperactive. Sure. You know, and so like, I'm a little jealous of that. Like those high energy people. I'm like, man, I'd love to know what that felt like, because I. I'm a very low energy person and I don't like that. Yeah. No, nobody does. Yeah. So, I mean, armor, a lot of doctors complain about armor thyroid because it's derived from pigs. So mm -hmm. the, it sounds really disgusting. It's like, oh, you got pig thyroid, but their, their hormones, their thyroid hormones are the same. <laughs> They're basically the same as ours. So 
it's not as bad as it sounds, right? It's just a cheaper way to get it. I mean, I love bacon, than, so I'm down for the well, big thyroid stuff. <laughs> just, could, just think of it as like bacon on steroids. <laughs> right, I'm down with it. <laughs> yeah, and of course, you have to get a prescription for that because they don't want you overdosing the thyroid hormones because it can screw up your heartbeat. Okay. If you take way too much, obviously not a good thing. But Okay. But yeah. And then the carotene gene, I mean, you have a plus minus, so you have less conversion of carotene to retinol. Okay. Um, but it's it's a plus minus, so I'm not too worried about that one. Okay. Um, AKT1, I suppose in can in Texas you can't even admit whether you have whether you do cannabis or not. Well, this is why I said <laughs> my husband needs to hurry up and retire, so yeah, right. I can you know I'd, I'll be I joke with him, I'm gonna be smoking weed up in the house, you know, not that I'm right, actually right. gonna be doing that, but. You know, I want to I want to be able to do that without fearing that it's going to affect his career. Right. <laughs> well, and this gene, this gene AKT one, it gives you more uncomfortable paranoia when you get high. It's not a health issue. It's just usually people you have to watch out for that, especially with edibles. <clears throat> okay. If you take too much, you know, it's it's a lot more uncomfortable. Um, Again, not really a health concern, just something to be aware of. Well, I'm a paranoid person sometimes anyway, so I could see sure. how that would be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Or something to watch, at least. Right. And then the catecholamines. Um, I mean, honestly, usually with that AKT1 gene, people just don't like cannabis. Those are the people that are like, yeah, I tried it a couple times and I don't like it. Um, but of course, they usually start off with way too high of a dose and all that. Well, I've never actually smoked weed ever. I did get what they call contact high one time. Oh, sure. Back yeah. in high school, like right before I joined the military, <laughs> and I was all paranoid that, like, I was with my drug test that you get right before you, like, mm. leave for basic. I was like, oh, my God. So I drank, like, 400 gallons of pickle juice, <laughs> <laughs> which that, that, I'm wow. not even sure that that's a thing, but I thought it was at the time. So luckily that's I was funny. good. But, yeah, so I'm not even my sure. My brother's. That, <laughs> That's so funny. My brothers used to drink pickle juice. They're so ridiculous. They, <laughs> my, I have a brother. He eats like sardines in the morning and drinks pickle juice. Oh, God. Is he single? <laughs> no, he's oh. married with kids. I don't, know, I don't know if he does it anymore, but That's I wouldn't funny. be shocked if he did, to be honest, because she's mean, all into kombucha and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's not, un <laughs> it's not unhealthy. It sounds disgusting, but it's not unhealthy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's basically <laughs> vinegar water, and it, as long as they don't have all those artificial dyes in there, right? Right, yeah. Like, oftentimes they have these artificial yellow dyes and things that are, are pretty safe, to be honest, those yellow ones, but still, it's artificial dye. You just don't want to be chugging a lot of that. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but the catecholamines is the next section. Okay. <clears throat> and, uh, excuse me, and basically, you know, as you can see in the paragraph, just drink plenty of water. Make sure you get electrolytes, especially when you're intermittent fasting and things, you know? Yeah. Um, don't be afraid of salt. I know? love the I mean, element stuff. Yeah, rubble. That stuff is awesome. I mean, I'm, I just call it my salty lemonade now, which nice. nobody Good. else in my family likes to drink it because I'm just like, it. you have to expect <sighs> it to be super salty or you're not going to like right. it. So, sure. yeah. That's, right. I don't. I probably need to do more a day. I drink like one a day, but I think you need like three or four to actually get all your electrolytes. Well, you get it from food too, so that's probably good. It depends how hard you're working out, how hard you're sweating. Usually on a on a day you hit the sauna, you know, take another one, that sort of thing. You know? Yeah, it's always a, a little bit of a plate by ear. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, that's good. Rob's definitely a friend of mine. He moved to Austin. Did you know that? I everybody's moving to Austin. Like I think. <laughs> well, he lives here. Like Rachel Hollis, she's like one of my favorite people. She and her family yeah. live here. And then right. I think Ben Greenfield lives in Austin. He's kind of out there though. I'm oh, not sure man. we could actually be friends in real life. Oh, he's a great guy. Because he's yeah. He make he puts up too many selfies of his body. Like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm just like I'm That's glad. That's the brand, you're, though. I'm glad you're. Pr I know. I, I'm like I'm glad you're proud of it and everything. But like, I'm just like, oh gosh, can you like post a picture of your kids or something else other than your chest? Right. But anyways, well, yeah, yeah. All the no, all the people well, are moving to Austin. I feel like. I don't think he lives. I feel I like he lives he in moved. Austin, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I I thought something on Instagram that he posted not wow. too long ago said something about him living in Austin. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I'd be surprised because, again, I know him pretty well, but... Maybe he, I'm wrong. Maybe he was he in... I don't know. It. I'm sure I'm wrong, but... But no, you are right about everybody seeming to move to Austin. Tim <laughs> Ferriss, for sure, you know. There's a lot of people, but... Anyways, Rob Wolf's great, you know, and his element stuff is good, and, you know. 
Yeah. Keep doing that. That's that's the key there. It's pretty okay. simple. In the B9 category, I mean, you definitely have some genetic issues. Have you heard of this MTHFR that everybody talks about? I have, and I it's didn't. Kind of, yeah, and I, it. I shouldn't say everybody, right? Because it's like there's so many people out there never heard of it. But everybody in the like the the wellness community, they talk about this, particularly the functional doctors, because it's a really important uh, gene to mm -hmm. consider. And of course, it's not just one. Gene, there's other like MTH to FD1, and there's a bunch of other aspects to it. But at the end of the day, as long as, this is where you do want to eat leafy greens. Okay. You know, my husband would support that. I'm I'm not a huge vegetable eater, but my husband's always getting on to me about that. Yeah, it, it <laughs> is good for you. I mean, again, you could do some of the supplements here. I think as long as you're just eating some leafy greens, your genes aren't that bad in this category. Um, some plus some plus mi minuses i mean there is one plus one or two plus pluses but okay. even if you're just eating leafy greens you should be fine okay i mean that's the take home right you don't have to get too caught up in all the details there okay um heavy metals um is another category this one does come up with some plus pluses okay the big one of course is that cbs gene that gives you a higher risk of arsenic buildup okay um, so, you know, I would pay more attention to the foods that might contain arsenic, and of course I'd list them there, Brussels sprouts, you know, sometimes rice, but not too commonly. Okay. Uh, certainly mass-produced chicken, because a lot of the grains they feed them have arsenic in it, just at low level, but it builds up in their bodies. So I always get my chicken from, like, free-range farmers direct, you know? Yeah, and I try to, but my husband is still like, I've been eating, you know... Right. Tyson now chicken my whole reason. life and I'm <laughs> fine and I'm like are you really fine like we don't really know that but you know right yeah so that gives me another reason to support getting chicken from the farm yeah especially right now if you can find a farmer that's having trouble getting you know getting it into the market with this lockdown situation yeah I've ordered we have a farm here that I've ordered from a few times Good. and you know I certain things from them I love like steaks we're having a problem mm -hmm. finding like ribeye because we eat a lot of ribeyes mm. we're that's having a good a, problem yeah. <laughs> yeah we're having a problem finding a farm that the ribeyes are as like tender when you cook them as they are from like heb sure so that's the only issue that my i can't fully convert my husband over to the farm life because the ribeyes aren't as good uh, as the ones we get from the store other than that right. he's sold on that's it funny. That's so, so funny yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, many ribeyes we'll figure that well, out well i mean what I do is I have a I have two chest freezers, uh -huh. and then I I only buy chickens in the summertime. And the farmer I know he actually keeps them out in the in the grass. They actually free range. They basically are out marching around. They're not quote unquote free range where they're in a pen with the door open and they might go outside and they probably don't. Mm -hmm. They're actually free range. Like I can go to his farm and he's got chickens running around everywhere uh -huh. in his fields. And and again, if we buy them in the winter. It, it, like then those chickens are just sitting indoors eating grains right okay so i try i try and stock up in the summer and just freeze them down you know okay all right but the point is avoid arsenic okay <laughs> all right <laughs> and you can look into it a little bit more there if you want i'm not a super expert on that but it is definitely in your genetics okay and then fructose of course at the very end there I mean, you want to be careful with fructose oh boy that's soda. my biggest my biggest thing right there is why yeah, I'm not 100% like Clovis is because sure. of the dang sugar. Oh, oh sugar is so, yeah, it's addictive. Forever. Well, there's definitely fruits that have lower fructose. That's why I link my website there because I, I, have, an, I have some different fruits that I have listed that have lower fructose. Mm -hmm. And I list how much is in them and all that. So I'd just check out that link. Okay. Know? All right. But the problem with this plus plus gene, it's called PNPLA3. It leads to a higher risk of fatty liver. Basically, when fructose comes in your body, it can either be burned as energy or stored as fat in your liver, and your body wants to just store it as fat. Ah. So not not ideal, right? No, that's not ideal at all. So that's that's why that's the, the logic. Um. So let's see the gym section. We can probably go through this a little bit quicker, but. I mean, you're kind of a mix between endurance and power with that ACTN3, that's your muscle fiber type gene. So nothing like super extreme either way, but that's good because you're flexible to kind of work out in any which way you want. Okay. 
Um, certainly some joint risk, you know, for inflammation in your joints and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've been told I mean, in the past that I have fibromyalgia, but it, it, I no. never wanted to be medicated for it. Like I have a, I have a sister who takes medication for everything. Like she's the mm -hmm. most unhealthy person I've ever met. And <laughs> yeah. we don't have a good relationship because of that, because I just can't deal with the negativity about every aspect of life. Sure. But so when I was told I had fibromyalgia, I think it was about a year or two before I got pregnant. I kind of was like, okay, that makes sense. But then I never really asked a doctor for like help with it or drugs because I just was like, well, I'll just deal with it. You know, I just don't right. want to medicate every problem in my life, but. Right, no, I agree with you. That's a good philosophy to have. I mean, it's gonna be a slow process, of course, because, you know, taking that birth control for so long, it's hard to kind of, you know, reset your system. Right. And I think the thyroid is gonna be really key. And yet what's ironic is you'll notice there's a section called joints and then in brackets it says iodine mm -hmm. because that gene gives you a risk of something called osteoarthritis where basically your joint tissue just kind of slowly degrades and then you get bones rubbing on bones. Uh, yeah, I don't want that. Yeah, <laughs> good. No, and that's only if your thyroid hormones are low. Okay. So in other words, getting your thyroid hormones up is actually healthy for your joints as well. Not only will it give you more energy, but it actually is gonna improve your joints. So that's a really important target just okay. for you in general. Okay. Because the other ones right above that, HLA, those HLA genes, they're pretty high risk of arthritis, but they're they're triggered by high insulin. Okay. So in other words, if your blood sugar is really high, well, yeah, then like I say, maybe take metformin, definitely lower your carb intake, that sort of thing, like right. get your blood sugar down, but that's a pretty easy target to drop, you know? Right. I mean, you might even be there with intermittent fasting and things. You might be below 90. Okay. I mean, definitely something to check. Right. And then if you really have joint pain, that IL-2RA gene, um, usually krill oil fixes that one. It, it's, a, it's called interleukin IL, IL-2. And krill oil does a good job of suppressing interleukin if that gets too high. Okay. Um, but again, I'd probably focus on the thyroid, you know, getting that iodine, checking okay. those thyroid hormones. Okay. Um, and blood flow is pretty, that ITGIV gene is super common. Everybody has that. Basically exercise, you know, like you right. got to exercise every day okay. just for your, your joint health. And then the gout risk, I'm not too worried about if you're being cautious of fructose. SLC2A9 is a fructose transporter. Okay. So if you're, if you're eating loads of fruit, having too much high fructose corn syrup, all that, well, yeah, then your joints are going to build up uric acid, and that causes gout, right? It forms these crystals that it's like having glass shards in your joints, which obviously nobody wants. Right. And again, fruit. if you go into the doctor and you've got gout, they'll tell you avoid meat, <laughs> <laughs> which makes me laugh because this gene is a fructose transporter. It has nothing to do with meat. Right. And you have a plus plus and you have nothing else in this category, meaning... That would be terrible advice, but they, that's what they would tell you. Trust me, you know, they, right. they'd say, don't, don't question what I say, avoid meat. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a lot of doctor's that. advice, avoid red meat and avoid yeah, salt. And yeah. I'm just like, oh my, and my husband's African-American. So I'm just like, you know, he's gotten a lot of advice about, you know, lower sodium. Like, cause he, you know, sure. I don't think he has high blood pressure really. Cause he's, uh, he's mm -hmm. an athlete, but mm -hmm. you know, he's had a high blood pressure before when he's been in the doctor and they're like, oh, Lower your salt, mm, avoid red right. meat. And I'm like, that's the opposite <laughs> of what you should do. Right. But, you know. It's yeah, just... yeah. Well, and and your blood pressure genes look really good, right? I mean. I've never, I, ever had an issue yeah. with blood pressure. Even when I was pregnant, even when my both my parents were sick and before they died and stressful moments, I've never, thankfully, had a blood pressure issue. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, as long as you're exercising, too, you know, you can maintain that all the way down. And but bone strength comes up with a couple plus pluses. Okay. But what's interesting here, it's important to note that one of them is a plus plus for weaker bones and one is actually a plus plus for stronger bones. Okay. <laughs> so they probably will offset. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't worry. So it looks a little bad, but right? But as long as you're doing that vitamin D, you're exercising, you're getting that K2 with vitamin D, I'm not worried there. So okay. really good, good genes in the athletic department. Okay. Um, and then, of course, the sleep, you have some genes, right? Right. In particular, the clock gene. I think that's where your sleep difficulties are coming from. Okay. Um, you have a plus-plus clock gene, which, you know, as you can see, right, the category is general sleep difficulties, meaning, you know, 
it's not ideal to have that version of the gene. Right. Or the ABCC9. I mean, the, those ones, they're pretty common, but they, they definitely cause a lot more sleep disruptions and sleep issues, shorter sleep duration. Okay. Um, and I can't, I, I try to get the aura ring, but they don't make them small enough for me. Oh, like wow. my ring size just put it is like yeah. a four and a, four and a quarter. And wow. the smallest um, aura <laughs> ring is like a six. And That's I'm not funny. even sure if if my thumb, which I'm not sure I could w I'd keep a ring on to my thumb, but like that might right. be the only possibility, which is kind of awkward. But I am sure. I, another retirement present that my husband's giving me. This is his mm -hmm. retirement present that he's giving to me for putting up with him. Yeah, is yeah. Um, <laughs> the eight sleep bed. Oh, very which cool. Which I'm super excited to get that bed because I always wake up in the middle of the night super hot. Right, and cools then, it off. Yeah, so it's yeah. I'm so that's that in the sauna. Like I'm super excited for retirement because I get to uh, buy both of those gifts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right on. I mean, yeah, that's an important thing. Temperature regulation. Do you take any magnesium? Let me just check. You sent me your supplement. Um, no, not real. I mean, I guess in the in the element, yes. Sure, I would take more. I would take uh, like a magnesium supplement right before bed. Generally, I, I would avoid snacking for sure. Okay. Like snacking in the evening is probably the best way to ruin your sleep cycles. <laughs> okay, noted. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, that was the most shocking thing to me when I got the Aura Ring. I've, I've, I'm on my second Aura Ring because I used my first one so for like a year and just wore it out. Okay. <laughs> but this second one I've got will probably last me five years because I, I don't wear it during the day. I just wear it at night. Oh, okay. And then I keep it on the charger all day. Mm -hmm. And I don't go bashing it up. I'm pretty bad about, you know, like deadlifting and stuff, doing weightlifting with the ring on. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not responsible with my, my hands. <laughs> including my wedding band which just always looks you know like somebody was sandpapering it <laughs> but um <laughs> the aura i mean when i first got it i couldn't believe how much i mean that was that was the biggest trigger for me ruining my sleep was just eating a snack it doesn't even matter if it was a carrot you know what i mean right okay like, like a little bit of healthy food in the evening boom my sleep my deep sleep is gone and i'm pretty poor sleeper so it's not like you know it could be just me a little bit but still yeah uh, and i'm a perpetual night night snacker so right, that's a tough yeah. one yeah it takes a few <laughs> it takes like a week to get your body off that cycle too yeah but magnesium is the one thing i would cheat on definitely have some magnesium powder in the evening okay right before you go to bed okay you can even try lithium um low dose lithium I at least recommend trying it again like five milligrams per day over the counter dose you know not like crazy high doses for <laughs> mental disorders you okay know? right people often get afraid of lithium because because of that because yeah i mean that's what you prescribe. first think of yeah right, right. <laughs> and again those are absurdly high doses but um with this clock gene they've actually done clinical studies with lithium on groups of people that have and the people with the bad version of this gene like you've got they've seen improvements right Okay. So definitely some things to try. It's hard to tell if you're improving without the Aura Ring. Um, that's why I like it or some kind of sleep tracker. Mm -hmm. Because, and you know, again, it, if you can get it on your thumb, all you need to do is just have it at night. You know? Right. I tend to take so things off at night while I'm sleeping. Sure. So I'm just... You wake up and it's like, oh, yeah, you can't Yeah, like it. my sleep mask. I'm like, where did it go? I put it on my eyes and then now right. it's like nowhere. I do that like, too. what do I do? I, I don't know. So yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm willing to try it though. But I'm going to get the... Eight, we're going to get the eight sleep bed within the next year. So, good. you know, yeah. I'm excited yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, I always get these super dark curtains too. I get the like blackout curtains. Mm -hmm. I always tell people that like the the test for that to see if they work. You know, if you go to a, a curtain store, I guess there's not really a curtain store. But like if you go to Walmart and you're picking out curtains, I don't mm -hmm. remember where my wife gets curtains, but I always go with her and I put them over my head. Like I'm literally in the store just like putting curtains <laughs> over my head like I'm a, like I'm going to get kidnapped. Right. <laughs> and if you if it's like pitch black in there, that's a great curtain. If it's letting a bunch of light in, move on you know like find right. a different one yeah <laughs> because it's a lot better to use like blackout curtains and turn all the lights off and all that kind of thing than than to use a sleep mask i think right yeah that's very true and my husband and i have different like he totally different ways that we sleep like he, the military has ruined his sleep 
Mm, so yeah. it's almost like I think we're going to do a trial of like us sleeping in separate rooms, like, you know, back in the 50s or whatever. Sure. A lot you of people know, are doing that. Just right because now. I want to yeah. I want to try it for like a few months just to see if it improves my sleep, because that's, sure. you know, that's it's, important. It's a, it's a huge priority. Yeah. I mean, you can have amazing genetics, but if you're sleeping poor, it doesn't matter. It'll screw up everything. Right. You know, so and then people are like, well, which genes? <laughs> it's like, no, 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 it's not the genes. Um, it's the lifestyle, right? Right. But ABCC9, that's a potassium channel. So some potassium in the evening is also good. Okay. And you're probably getting plenty. I mean, you're getting it from that element. So I would worry less about that one. And that one's a plus minus, so it's not as problematic. You know? Okay. And you are a little bit more blue, blue light sensitive. Um, so be careful. Blue, I mean, that's... I don't know if you've heard of like blue blocker glasses. Yeah, I do. I have them, but yeah. I don't have the nighttime ones. I just have like the day ones. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, you're a little bit more sensitive, plus minus, but not extreme. So the worst case is when you have like computer screens and phones and things right before you go to bed. Right. That's where you want to like at least have an app on your computer that blocks the blue light. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then seasonal effect of the very last gene. I mean, you're at more of a risk of depression in the winter, particularly. But in Texas, you know, I don't think you have to worry too much. Yeah, we don't really have too much of winter weather here. Exactly. So, I mean, that's the that's the solution, frankly. Like people up here in Minnesota, where I'm at, of course, you know, they have a pretty high risk. They always, when they have this gene, they're like, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I get it. And the real solution is just going to Texas, right? Or yeah, we used so, to live in San Diego, so that was that was a good cure for that too. Yeah. Being in yeah. San Diego. <laughs> so I'm I'm less worried about that. So overall, like I said, you have pretty good genes, right? I mean definitely some hot spots there. I think you can address those pretty you know, pretty easily. Yeah. Um and of course with that blood thinning you have to work pretty close with a functional doctor, but at least I have some solutions there for you and I think if you're tracking your blood you can definitely switch off the prescription stuff, the artificial stuff, and into the natural supplements that have, like I say, beneficial properties. Right. Like, you know. Because there's like, no yeah, real way to track. Well. Like the blood thinner that I'm taking now, I asked the doctor, like when I got off the Coumadin and I didn't have my INR tested, I was like, well, how do we know this is working? And mm -hmm. they were like, well, as long as you don't get another DVT. And I'm like, seriously? Oh, gee. That's like yeah. the way that we tell? Like, okay, so right. that sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no I, I mean i would just like i say work with somebody try and get off the, of course i can't legally say like you should definitely get off these prescription drugs but you know that would be the tendency right no i already and, and, want to so that you don't even yeah. have to say that and then shift into these natural supplements uh, just one of them pick one pick your favorite try a bunch right try it try all of them at relatively low dose and just see how your body feels because some Virtually all the ones that I recommend in that paragraph, uh, uh, specific to your factor five gene, I'm recommending those because they're beneficial in other ways mm -hmm. as well. So it's not just one benefit, you get a few benefits like they're anti-inflammatory, right? And then just see how you feel and pick the, your favorite and then work up on dose with your functional doc, testing mm -hmm. your INR at every step and just making sure you got locked down and then you're good for life, you know what I mean? Right. You should be. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm so excited about that. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a big one I think for you and you know, I think everything else should be pretty straightforward, but I mean, if you have any questions looking back, do you have anything that's uh, jumping out at you? Well, so the main reason the main reason there okay, two reasons I did the 23 and me. One were because mm -hmm. my mother died of breast cancer. Yep. And the other one was to see like what diet and lifestyle things it would recommend. So the cancer mm -hmm. one, like, I don't really know how much, I know there's like controversy about how, how much of that is in your DNA versus how much is like lifestyle and diet. But right. like, of course, you know, my mom, you know, dying of breast cancer, that's always something that's affected my life, you know, and it's something that oh, yeah. I unfortunately think about all the time. But like, right. she's the only person, I mean, her, she has two sisters that are still living. Um, right. Like she died 25 years ago. So it's been a yep. long time. Yep. So her two sisters are still living and they were older than her. So, right. and as far as I know, there's no other breast cancer in, in our family, just her, but. Yeah, yeah. No, you, you don't have that much genetic. I mean, you definitely have a tendency for higher estrogen issues. Okay. But again, almost all those genes, in your case, they're basically related to artificial estrogens. Okay. 
and uh, you know, breast cancer is up 250% since 1980 in America. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's even higher in a lot of like Philippines, it's up 500%. Oh, wow. And it's, it's not because, you know, it's not genetic. <laughs> like, right. Genetics haven't changed. DNA hasn't changed that much in the last 20 years or 50 years or whatever. Uh-huh. It's because of these chemicals right. that we're introducing in our foods and all that. And right. I, I mean, if you if you have my book and you're looking at that top ten list, you've got to lock on those chemicals. That's exactly the problem. Okay. It's and again, you don't have any crazy genes in that category. You're actually not that bad, right? Just avoid those chemicals. You'll be fine. Birth control didn't help, but right. Like I say, sauna. That's the ultimate way to reverse that. Okay. And it, it can take a while, but. I th- I'm not that concerned in that section. You know, it's not something that's jumping out at me and saying, "Oh, you've got a huge risk here. Let's really get crazy with this." Okay, all right. Yeah. So sauna, eight sleep bed, and add Low iodine, color. and my life is going to be right. remarkably right. better. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and and keep an eye on that blood sugar. Like, find yeah. that out. As okay. soon as you can. I will. Make sure it's below 90. Because even in the topic of cancer, there's a great book called Tripping Over the Truth. I have that book. I just have not read it yet. Oh, yeah. So, it's it's yes. an interesting book. I mean, the real thesis is that cancer cells eat sugar. There's something called the Warburg effect. Um, mm-hmm. A guy got a Nobel Prize. His name was Otto Warburg. And he discovered that in, it was like the 1920s. He discovered cancer cells eat sugar. <laughs> it's like, and that's huge news, right? Like, right. We're all looking for what are the common themes with cancer. You know, you got brain cancer, you got breast cancer, you got liver cancer, whatever. They're all so different, but they all eat sugar. You know, mm, yeah, pretty much exclusively. So it's certainly one of the best ways to prevent cancer, just based on that principle alone, is to make sure you're not super high blood sugar. Right. I mean, that's that's the foundation of avoiding cancer and most people don't do that you know no yeah that's true yeah so okay it's, it's a big target i would say almost more than the estrogen mm-hmm. and if you're doing the sauna then you're really taking it up a notch because they did a 20-year study with saunas over in uh, scandinavia and they found it decreased cancer wow it decreased alzheimer's it decreased heart disease <laughs> it's wow. like literally everything that was problematic was decreased so Wow. You can't, you can't beat the sauna. No, that's, you know? that should be like a tax write-off for my health insurance or something. <laughs> I don't know. It should be. <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah. So should this, right? Yeah, true. <laughs> but what are you going to do? It's a system. Yeah, no, it's all right. It's all right. I'm, I'm glad that we... This has been very... I'm really glad because I was hoping that I wasn't going to be disappointed after today's talk. Because I'm like, what if he agrees to do this podcast and then like there's nothing legitimately wrong in my DNA. I'm just uh. the cause of everything. <laughs> And then no. <laughs> I'm glad that there's some things I can do because I like to take action steps. So I'm glad I have right. a lot of action steps that I can take. Yeah, thanks. I mean, that's the goal, right? I wouldn't do it if I didn't think it was going to help. And and I specifically, that's one of the goals, right? To try and make sure there's easy, practical application. I just appreciate that you did it as a podcast and recorded it for other people to learn. So. Oh, no, I'm, I mean, really I'm all it. I'm all about helping other people in any way. So that's kind of like my passion. If only I could find a way to, you know, make that financially good for myself right, to right. help other people. Oh, yeah. I'm working on keep that. Keep working on that. Yeah, <laughs> keep working on that. That's that's a true, you know, it's a lot better than being in a cubicle all day. Doing yes, something you hate. definitely. Definitely. All right, thanks. Well, thanks, Stephanie. Have Thank a good you. day, and uh, I'll be in touch on email about the recorder and whatnot. And okay. You know. Thank you. I really appreciate it. All right. Take care. All right. You too. Bye.